welcome to the auto show well after a successful launch and response to the XC90 Volvo has now come up with S90 and we are here in Malaga in Spain to test drive the S90 well when you talk to the company they say it is much bigger and better in fact uh, be it looks be it uh, the luxury feel or the driving dynamics it has it all let's come to the specifics now Up front the S90 gets concave oversized grille with vertical slats updated iron mark Volvo logo thin headlights with Thor's hammer daytime running lights a well carved bonnet and down below it gained a sporty bumper with a wide intake and a protruding splitter like element Moving on to the sides the S90 showcases a sleeker profile due to the coupe like roof line notch back style trunk lid and longer rear windows the sedan sits on 20 inch wheels which enhances the looks further At the back the car gets C-shaped tailgates, a clean trunk lid, larger Volvo lettering between the tail lights and below the sedan gets chrome tip dual exhausts. Well built on the same platform as the XC90 which is the scalable product architecture, the S90 not surprisingly comes added with new safety features. Park assist and large animal detection are a couple of highlights that in fact are the world first that have been introduced in any car. And of course there is semi autonomous uh, adaptive cruise control system that assists the drivers while driving. Let me explain you how. Volvo S90 is the first car with a standard system that will automatically brake you to a stop or significantly reduce speed when a big animal is detected. Will surely come very handy on Indian roads. Another feature is the pilot assist, the second generation of a system that interfaces cruise control, lane keep assist and forward collision systems as well as high resolution cameras and processing developed by Volvo itself in Sweden. We'll talk about it a little later on the show. Well, as you step inside, you find that the interior of the car is of top-notch quality. The cabin is large and spacious. There is enough legroom and headroom both at the front at the back and also at the boot. Uh, Uh, there is of course a whole host of interesting uh, new chrome finish that uh, has been added uh, there's a nice touch screen uh, that comes pretty handy and the Bowers and Wilkins uh, stereo system that adds to the overall appeal step inside and the S90 continues the Scandinavian design theme with a clean and uncluttered layout This new interior with its wood inlays and chrome and metal accents wrapping from door to door across the dash is arguably the S90's greatest leap. More changes are visible on the door panels. The vertically oriented dash vents Volvo calls them air blades look terrific as does the polished metal on the dashboard's lower edge. The key element in this interior is the 9-inch portrait oriented LCD screen. It controls several of the usual functions including the climate control system. Seats are well shaped and properly padded. The rear seats are also good although the cushion here is a tad low. And then we started to drive the S90 on the roads of southern Spain. Like the XC90 SUV, the new S90 is equipped with a choice between two engines combined with the likelihood of a plug-in hybrid variant in the future. The S90 T5 is equipped with a turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder engine making 250 horsepower while the S90 T6 is equipped with a supercharged and turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder engine generating 316 horsepower. Both are paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission and the T5 model is front drive while the T6 is all-wheel drive. Floor the accelerator from a dead stop and S90 moves out smartly and pretty much immediately. So the S90 variant that will come to India first will be the diesel one D5 and uh, this is actually uh, a very powerful engine sub 2 liter but gives out 235 horsepower. The gear shifts smoothly to extract the best from the smallish engine. You can significantly alter its behavior by using the S90's drive mode selector. In the default comfort mode, gear changes are unobtrusive and as expected. Select eco mode and the transmission upshifts a bit earlier and is noticeably less eager to kick down when you are towing into the throttle. 
pick sport mode and the opposite occurs with the transmission upshifting at higher rpm kicking down two gears with the slightest provocation and also taking into account cornering and braking behavior to minimize inconvenient shifts when you are driving aggressively on a winding road while the volvo's engine might have only four cylinders it's happy in its work idle quality is very smooth and quiet and we noticed only the occasional hint of a four cylinder drone in normal driving push the car hard and the 2 liter sounds purposeful and harmonious as it shifts between 6000 rpm and the 6500 rpm red line a slightly sportier soundtrack is available by selecting sport mode The S90 also can steer itself using the standard pilot assist function. This feature now works with speeds of up to 130 kilometers per hour along with adaptive cruise control and it works very well on highways with clear lane markers. But you can't remove your hands from the wheel for more than 15 seconds and the system can't keep up with the sharper turns on winding roads. Unfortunately, the electrically assisted steering makes the S90 feel a bit ponderous. The effort builds up quickly as the steering wheel is eased with slightly off-center. While overall steering effort can be adjusted to one of the three levels, the heavy off-center characteristic never goes away. Brake feel is excellent with a reasonably firm pedal and no dead motion. Interestingly, the brake pedal responds a little more immediately in sport mode, although the feel remains progressive. The S90 is about 195 inches long with a wheelbase of nearly 116 inches. Volvo has been on a boron steel spree for decades. The company says that about 35% of the S90's total body weight is hot form steel with aluminum used in a few front structural areas. New S90 also offers runoff road mitigation which is designed to prevent one of the most common types of fatal accidents. Between the speeds of 40 to 85 miles per hour, the system can sense a potential run off the road situation and in response it can both steer and brake out automatically to keep the S90 on the road surface. This feature will also come very handy on the Indian roads. Well, the cabin is exceptionally quiet and uh, you know the suspension is also brilliant and it feels really good to drive this car. Uh, the sense of luxury, the sense of great driving dynamics both fit in very well. What Volvo is trying to do as one of the world's smallest car companies is change the world. The goal of Volvo's Vision 2020 initiative is to ensure that no one is killed or injured in a new Volvo in the year 2020 and beyond. That is a task that no other car company has cut out for itself and Volvo's quest is accompanied by similar efforts to limit vehicle emissions and traffic congestion. Coming to the S90, well this might be just the first Volvo sedan that you genuinely desire on the strength of its beauty. The car is stylish, different and rather enchanting. After our extensive drive in the new S90 in the south of Spain, that the car has the potential to make a dent in the dominance of its German counterparts. All right, now time to tell you whether S90 is worth your money. Well, if you see this car looks terrific both inside and outside and Uh, this is definitely a big and a potential threat to its German rivals, be it Audi, BMW, or Mercedes. Well, with a lot of focus of the company on safety, style, and luxury, it seems like Volvo has a winner at hand. Especially after the success of XC90, the company is very bullish on S90 to do well in India too. In India, it comes uh, in September sometime. That's when it will be launched. You can watch out. for this one which is going to be priced pretty much in line with competition well, we showed you the car and the way it drives and soon it's going to come to india but let's now talk to the man who's behind this product the product manager of uh, s90 xc90 uh, lars langston thank you very much uh, for talking to bumba tv and welcome on the show thank um, you you know let's understand what went into making this product uh, when you thought you want to make it different you make you want to make it better than before um, what are the key points that you kept in mind well first of all we knew that we needed to do a completely new platform and uh, that platform should accommodate different car models for the future <laughs> so we started already in 2008 uh, with building the uh, platform foundation and this is the base uh, and this is or the first car out now it's the platform is called SPA the scalable product architecture and that is already done to be uh, electrified or to be combustion engine or a combination as an hybrid uh, also when you compare uh, volvo with other german rivals um, you know the acceptance right now is more for those and you know we see the numbers much mm. bigger or higher for them uh, how do you see yourself with now 
XC90, S90 competing and, and going forward, do you think you, ha you stand the chance of a strong chance? Yeah, we, we see for sure that the, these new models have all the basics you need to have to be in, in the premium segment. Before we have always been in the middle between the mass market and the premium. So now we have the uh, new front suspension with dual wishbones. We have the rear integral rear axle so you can have a really driving dynamics in the car and a nice comfort. And uh, then we have put a lot of effort into the design of the car. So we really are up to compete with Which it. are the big markets that you're betting on to see the next yeah. wave of growth come from Volvo? Of course it is coming back in US, America where we have been uh, losing out for some years. Now we are really seeing a uh, prosperity time there. And also China, of course, and then the European markets. And we see also that we are uh, growing more or less very much in Asia. Mm. Well, talking about Asia and coming to India, uh, Volvo has a very small presence, obviously. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, opportunity to grow. And we've seen uh, the big luxury car makers mm. uh, do well now for the last few years. You think uh, now Volvo has, uh, uh, you know, firmed up its plans even more to become far more aggressive than before? Yes, I would say so because we now we have the products in, in line and we have the products in different uh, models and we have we will renew our program. It will be new cars coming out every year, so uh, and they will be in the premium segment. So they will really compete and uh, also be then a very beautiful cars inside out with a high craftsmanship. So this will be the way to go forward with. All right, uh, Lexo, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much.